It's been a long day, very few people left. I'll try making this more engaging and fun. My name is Apoorv, uh, I'm coming all the way from Mumbai, um, and I head business for a firm called WebEngage. Um, can I have the slides? Someone from, brilliant. So keeping up with the retention evolution, I think that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, I'm just going to quickly try and understand who are the people in the audience. Any marketeers in the audience? Anybody from the marketing? Brilliant. At least a few. Um, any people from the technology background like IT, tech? How many people from operations? Business? Retail? I see a few people raising hands for everybody. I'm assuming they are founders because they do everything. <laughs> Super. So, uh, you know, a lot of jargons being used, conversational, AI, all of this, you know, retention, automation, whatnot, right? Let's simplify this for everybody, like, you know, what does it take, right? At the end of the day, what do we want to do? We want to engage a customer, try and retain a customer, and grow a customer. Basically, make more money from probably the same customer, or maybe convert all people who come on my platform or my store or anywhere else, right? That's the real goal. Danda karne ka apne ko. There is a CAC to that money. How can I get best return on my CAC? I think that's what it boils down to. And then there are various platforms and products and technologies that pull into this to add value, more value to your CAC. And you assume that they'll give you some sort of an ROI on that investment of sorts. I think that's what I'm going to be talking about. How do we do some of these things offsite? How do we simplify this? So keeping up with the retention evolution. Uh, super. I have a slight click up. Super, so I'm gonna go next. That's who I am, that's a very widened image of who I look like, but fair enough, that's what I do. So I'm gonna to get to 2022 customer behavior. Who's our customer, you know? Our customers are, first of all, millennials and Gen Zs. They are our real customers. Who are our customers? Customers are people who are actually being bombarded with a lot of communication and ads every day. That we are living in the world of reels, and to be honest, nobody has a retention span more than six to 10 seconds of videos. That's the level of customer that we have today. They hardly have any attention span, and hence, you can Im imagine how hard it is to drive loyalty with the same customer, right? So that's who our customer is. Giving you a stat, um, it is said with Gen Z, 50% of the Gen Z in last one year has actually bought via social commerce, which means, you know, you've got those ads on your Instagram or your Facebook. 50% of the overall global guys who are in the age bracket of 20, 25 have actually clicked on that ad and actually purchased. That's, that's who your customer today is, to be fairly honest with you. Who's, and again, obviously varied for various products and services. Uh, another good stat is that 70% of your customers, right, today buy because they get personalized experiences, whether it be in your online, um, you know, buying shop or an offline buying shop, wherever you go, right, online real estate or offline real estate, 70, 75% of your customers actually look for targeted personalized sort of experience to be able to purchase. That's their priority number one. So if you have a store or an online store which is not into personalized experiences versus another one which is into probability of buying from that particular store in the same category goes much higher, as high as about 75%. So this is the kind of customer that you're dealing with, right? Very, very short retention span, a lot of bombardment, a lot of communication, whether it be advertising or anything else, and absolutely a lot of impulse buying, social media oriented, buying social commerce and so many other things. So this is who your customer in 2022 is, which brings me to the next. Consumer also is spoiled for choices. Whether you look at the category of cabs, whether you look at categories of buying, someone was talking about you know, groceries, whether you know, today, if you're selling a product or service and you can't get this to someone's home, probably you can't sell a product or service. That's how, how customer is spoiled for choices today. So hence, driving loyalty has become way, way harder, right? Like absolutely, if someone, you can't keep an attention span of six seconds, imagine how do, you, how, do you, uh, how do you make a loyal customer out of this particular person, right? Who or he or she is buying of sorts. Which brings me to the point is, 
acquisition is not directly proportional to growth, which is where I started from, right? You are burning a lot of money, your CACs are increasing, retentions are, retention is lower, customer is not buying, let alone second and third purchase and loyalty or first purchase is only not happening. What will you grow? This is the reality of life, right? Right? This is what it is, right? So I was talking to someone outside and he or she was like, hey, you know, I'm trying to build D2C, it's really expensive. You know what, today I have to pay a large margin to an Amazon or someone else in a marketplace. I have hardly very thin margins left. They don't share data with me. How do I grow this? I'm stuck, right? That's what it is. I'm burning on acquisition, but where's the growth, right? Then I end up relying on partners who sell and take 25, 30% margins out of my business. What's left to me is nothing. How do I win my customer? Even if I invest, I don't get the data. There is no first party data to me. How do I understand who did, who bought, why did they buy, and so many other things, right? So that's where we are. So this is how, where we say, which is what we do, right? So taking a step back, WebEngage is a marketing automation or a consumer data platform. What we essentially do is a couple of things, right? We pull in data from all your sources. There are two kinds of sources that exist. One is online and one is offline. It could either come from your POS or it could come from a website or app. Once I have a data point, I create a 360 degree unified user profile of their online and offline experiences. I put in metadata along with it and then I can help you look at data in a certain way where you make sense of the data in terms of how do you engage, target your customer and then build segments out of it and probably Talk to that customer, right? Engage with that customer, have a conversation with that customer. Maybe, you know, push them from one stage of the funnel to the second stage and eventually repeat purchase and so many other things. So coming back, this is who we are, right? This is what today user expects. He expects you to remember what happened the last time. Because as I said, personalized experiences, I don't mean first name, last name, those emails that you send or that WhatsApp text. Everybody can do it. That's, that's personalization of the 90s. The real personalization is when I have context to your previous buying behavior, when I have context to what have you been searching for, when I have context to the fact that I came in but I was looking for something, it wasn't available, right? And I when I re-come back again, probably in the next 15 days, 30 days, I have that context to start from, not from the day one when I get into discovery again. I don't have the time. Remember the six second rule, right? You don't, if you don't hold them up for six seconds, you've lost them pretty much online, right? So you need to remember your customers. You need to talk them. Now today we have WhatsApps, we have you know, push notifications, we have emails, everybody's everywhere. But hey, you know what? Does he even open your email? In spite of having the most, oh, I'll use the word sexiest of the emails, hey, has someone looked in the dearth of inboxing that happens? Someone saw you, clicked on you to do something? Does he check you on WhatsApp? Does he look at the text that he gets? Is he on DND? You know, does he even receive the push notifications or is he, has he banned it on his app so you can't even deliver a push notification? That's how complicated the world is. So once you have a understanding of what are the last interactions, then your preferred channel, then value personalization, right? Which is where, which brings me to the biggest thing, right? What is value personalization? Can I know how many people here get discount cards? Wherever, on SMS, email, can someone raise hands? How many be believe that majority of those discount cards don't get used ever? Look at this. The amount of people that raised hand for discount cards, the same amount of people raised hand for the fact that they don't use it. You understand value personalization? No, probably I buy apparel, someone else buys sports goods, someone else buys something else, but their discounting is getting to anybody. You're spraying and praying, you're just sending some random stuff to someone who's not going to buy. And in turn, you're actually spamming that person. Because you never knew your customer in the first place. You never had the first party data. You never had anything. That's what I call value personalization. You any which is are discounting your brand. If the customer, which is not, which is actually anti-branding in a way, now that the guy is not going to use the coupon, then why waste your time, effort and money and you spend one buck on an email to send that coupon also. So what is the, what is the value ecosystem? There's nothing that you're getting. So please value personalization, and this is just one example, there's so many place, ways you can match your customer and what is your needs are, and what your last interactions have been, and then marry all of this to create a value proposition for the end customer in any space of the journey. Then absolutely, it's an adapting consumer behavior, right? So you need to adapt with times, right? How many, um, how many have heard of this brand called JCPenney, Toys for Us, anybody here, right? Right? 
where are they today these were the biggest retail sto stores in the country some of these bigger brands where is revlon how, how many people know revlon where is revlon it's not like hey people are not buying cosmetics where is revlon it's gone not adapting to the changing user behavior maybe you never had it but now that you do people are buying online why aren't you capturing it where is your first party data how will you make sense of what's happening online with your brand which brings me to the fact that cx has to be your priority i just don't mean cx by dropping email sms bombarding someone with you know um, you know whatsapp communication that's not what i mean by cx you need to have a organized user behavior and a consumer journey for your customers and the challenge in the consumer world is that hey you have millions of customers or users are coming to your platform not all of them convert our conversion rates are still 5 to 6% and that's when we celebrate hey great what a great funnel i converted 5% of my 1 million user that came to me you know so that's why cx needs to be a priority customer support over value of money how many of you today try and your products on amazon before you actually buy anything right click that button of prime and then four star reviews plus how many of you do that it's no no shameful thing everybody does it what does that mean customer support if when does a customer write bad things about you when either you supply there is obviously or everybody everybody you know goes through a bad customer experience it is going to happen in probably 100 or 1000 every 100 or 1000 of your order but the point is what happens post that what determines this thing when you have a bad experience someone tags you online for an airlines or someone else you actually offer good customer support they actually do a broadcast on a twitter or somewhere else about you so yes absolutely customer support is bigger than value of money awareness of relevant offers i've already handled it so i'm going to not talk about it more and appreciate loyalty absolutely you have 6 6 second uh, you know 6 uh, second attention of the customer you have to find unique ways to appreciate loyalty because absolutely you don't find loyal customers customers are spoiled for choices nobody any day you know uh, i know so many loyalty programs how, how many of you have heard the uh, uh, shopper stop loyalty program which was one of the first in india how many of you use it today it's very hard i'm not i'm not bad mouthing shopper stop i think a great business but hey that's the reality so you have to find unique ways of creating loyalty loyalty is no more about having points you know it is about having sense of the customer the how can they actually use that loyalty points or whatever you want to do in return sampling so many other ways to actually demand exclusive uh, you know if you're a fashion brand exclusive fashion shows could be anything i i'm just making up things but uh, that's what it is so which brings me to the fact to do all of these things along with cx you need to have a customer engagement and retention engine as a part of your tech stack today whether you're a small store a small business with just three stores to actually a larger marketplace to a brand which is selling automobiles to a hotel chain whoever you are you need to be able to talk to your customer in the right personalized fashion across your user journey slash funnel that's the absolute reality which brings me to the point that we've now come to a conclusion that we absolutely need a data or a consumer engine you how many of you agree by the way this is another question on this one how many of you agree that uh, you have a lot of data about your customer at least the name and the email address or somebody of something of that sort but you are not able to actually use that data to efficiency anybody here you you say that fair enough very few people but one of the biggest things that i actually go to banks and i come i when i when i reach out to probably you know larger airlines and you know large malls to so many other businesses that we go to they say you know what i am sitting on a lot of data you know specifically when i am an old legacy or a large enterprise business or if i am a mid size growing business who spent couple of years in the market now i have acquired some data and i can say you know these are the many customers that i already have who bought at least once or more with me or they have interacted with me on some channel or some aperture but hey you know what majority of that data and the customers are dormant i don't know what to do but what am i doing or alternatively is i'm actually still acquiring them 
on a Facebook and so on and so forth, selling them one time and then not forgetting what I already have, right? So this is where, which brings me down. You have a huge data wave. You know, it's already with you. What do you want to do? You want to surf up or surf down, right? So which brings me to the engine. Once you have a 360 degree user profile, you have some consumer understanding of your customer, you need to put that into practice. You need to use this to build scale, loyalty, build retention, try and cross sell, upsell to the same customer. Try and at least get them back to the platform, reactivate them. What are they sitting, dying? You spend a lot of CAC in getting them on board. How can they just be sitting there? The point you'll realize is that you're not talking enough to your customer. Even if you're doing, it's a lot of noise. It's not a conversation. It's noise, right? You're just sending them, hey, hi, Apoor, you know, hey, you know what, I have this offer for you. Without knowing, hey, you know what, do I even buy that kind of category or product or service, right? That's what's happening. I'm just going to let everybody read this. If you play with the data long enough, it will tell you secrets. That's what I've been telling you, right? We've cut the word torture. No one's asking you to torture the data, right? We're not asking, we're not talking about confessions. But if you play around with data long enough, step one is you have to have data captured for your businesses. If you're not capturing first party data in a current world, world scenario, you have to start somewhere. If you don't, you're gonna miss the bus very soon, right? So absolutely, if you play with your data segment. God, to end the conversation? Yeah, super, super. So um, that's, I'm gonna move ahead quickly. Um, this is what a uh, enablement by a customer data platform looks like. Uh, it gives you a unique view, it gives you actionable insights, which means that insights that can help you converse with your customers, right? How many people are bouncing off? How long do they stay on your platform? Which way did they enter in the funnel? Where did they drop out of the funnel? You know, uh, what are their cohorts looking like? And so many other things of sorts. Uh, this will help you use, uh, create dynamic segments once you understand about your customers, because yeah, as I said, you have millions of customers, they are similar in behavior, like you can have thousands of add to cart, but if you categorize them by category of your product and so many other things, how would you move ahead of sorts? So you increase customer engagement overall. Building an agile retention ecosystem, please, we first crawl, we walk and then run, nothing happens overnight, so please get started somewhere. Flexibility, your needs will evolve, okay? So be open to looking at your data, ideating and moving ahead. That's absolutely very important. The more flexible you are, the more smarter you will be. Agility, please experiment enough. Marketing is all about experiment. Engagement is all about. So you are going to get wrong, but if you don't try, you'll never know whether you, you'll never get wrong, you'll never fail, and you'll never succeed. So have agility to experiment. R be ready to take a leap. So have your data right, have your processes right, and automate. You know, don't just put people across. This is what we do. We convert, engage, and retain users. That's web engage to you. We humanize interactions, create stronger brand affinity. We stay relevant, and then uptick your revenue per customers. Again, so moving ahead. This is who we are, some of our customers. This is what we essentially do. The amount of data we track per day on a scale. What, what do we do across campaigns? Thank you so much. Any questions? Open to any questions. We don't have time for questions. Super, I'm happy to chat with you guys anywhere else.